Hey everyone, welcome to Rejection Week Day 2. Uh, yesterday I read Avocado and Escargot to go. Today I will be reading Cockadoodle Snooze. Here we go. One morning the sun rose high over Farmer McPhee's barn. Farmer McPhee had overslept. Wait till I get my hands on that Marco, said Farmer McPhee, wriggling into his farm overalls. Marco, his new rooster from Spain, had not crowed cock-a-doodle-doo. Farmer McPhee stepped over the dog and went to collect his eggs. He paused at the pig pen to pour slops into the trough. They're sleeping, said Pig. They're what? cried Farmer McPhee. Farmer McPhee pushed open the barn doors. They're sleeping, said Horse. They're what? cried Farmer McPhee. Farmer McPhee marched up to the chicken coop door. I wouldn't go in there if I were you, said Duck. Why not? cried Farmer McPhee. They are sleeping. The farmer put his ear to the door. He heard soft cooing, gentle clucking, and contented snoring. Coo, 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 cluck, cluck, cluck. Snore, snore, snore. <coughs> farmer McPhee burst into the chicken coop. Farmer McPhee reached under the hens. No eggs, he bellowed. He shook the rooster. No cock-a-doodle-doo, Farmer McPhee cried. Wake up, chickens. I want eggs. My, my, what's all the fuss, said the first hen, laying the first egg. I'm awake, I'm awake, said the second hen, laying the second egg. Sorry, we were up rather late, said the third th hen, laying the third egg. Cock-a-doodle-doo, yawned Marco. That's more like it, said Farmer McPhee, slamming the chicken coop door. And you better wake us up tomorrow, Marco. Farmer McPhee scratched his head. His hens were good layers. Something was wrong. The next morning, Farmer McPhee overslept again. He stepped over the dog and went to collect his eggs. Farmer McPhee paused at the pig pen to pour slops into the trough. Pig? said Farmer McPhee. Pig was dozing. Farmer McPhee pushed open the barn doors. Horse? said Farmer McPhee. Horse was napping. Farmer McPhee marched up to the chicken coop door. Doc, said Farmer McPhee. Doc was snoozing. He put his ear to the door and heard soft cooing, gentle clucking, and contented snoring. Coo, coo, coo. Cluck, cluck, cluck. <coughs> snore, snore, snore. Farmer McPhee burst into the chicken coop. Wake up, you lazy chickens, cried Farmer McPhee. I want eggs. Marco didn't crow. Everyone is fast asleep. Keep your shirt on, said the hens, laying the first egg. We're laying, we're laying, said the second hen, laying the second egg. Sorry, we were up rather late again last night, said the third hen, laying the third egg. cock a doo doo yawned Marco. Enough is enough, said Farmer McPhee. We're all oversleeping, Marco. You're not doing your job. This farm's gone crazy, thought Farmer McPhee. My eggs are never on time. I plan to find out what's going on. That night, Farmer McPhee went to spy on his hens. The moon was full as he peeked into the pig pen. No pig. He inched open the barn doors. No horse. He crept through the barn. No duck. He eased open the chicken coop door. No hens, no Marco. Farmer McPhee spied the back door of the barn door open. He followed the trail across the meadow, through the woods, over the bridge, and up a hill. Farmer McPhee heard music and stomping feet coming from a ramshackle barn. He looked through a crack in the side of the barn and gasped. Marco was teaching pig, horse, duck, and the hens flamenco dancing. I'm going to march in there and give them all a piece of my mind, grumbled Farmer McPhee. Was that a rose dangling from Marco's mouth? He watched dogs strumming a Spanish guitar. Duck clacked his beak like castanets. Horse and pig swished their hips from side to side with hooves in the air. The hens snapped their feathers. The barn shook with a wild flamingo beat. Farmer McPhee watched Marco stomp and twirl. It did look like fun. Farmer McPhee began swinging his hips. He tapped his feet and clapped his hands. Marco 
Farmer McPhee burst into the barn. Ole! he shouted. The next morning, everyone overslept. The end. And now some reactions, some rejections. Hi, Steve. I'm sorry to write that we don't see a place for cockadoodle snooze on our list, but thanks so much for allowing us to consider it. Have a lovely evening. Cockadoodle snooze. This story left us scratching our heads. What does a cockadoodle have to do with hens laying eggs? The image of all the barnyard animals dancing is fun, but it doesn't quite make sense or feel satisfying as an ending. If the farmer forgets about his eggs and joins on the fun, does that mean he never had a problem in the first place? The logic of this one escapes us. A rooster who doesn't cock-a-doodle-doo is definitely a problem, but that his silence would make a problem for the farmer awaiting his eggs just doesn't compute. Number three. This is a very funny concept. And funny chicken books have a real audience out there, both among editors and readers. I'm afraid it doesn't quite feel right fit for me, though. Number four. You sent in cockadoodle snooze for my consideration. And while I like the lighthearted tone and the character of Farmer McPhee, I'm afraid the overall plot feels a bit too slight for me, especially given how many rooster crow books I see. While the writing is strong and funny, I'll have to pass. What a, number five, what a cute title. While I think the writing here is clean, snappy, and humorous, especially the hen's responses, I feel that it might be too similar to Doran Cronin's Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type, and not quite strong enough to compete. So there you have it, Cockadoodle Snooze. I still love this book and plan to send it out and rework it and tweak it as time goes on and hope one day to find a home for it. So don't you stop and don't you be stalled by rejections and um, hands in the air saying stop. Sometimes you just have to go forward and believe in yourself. Stay safe. Bye-bye.